Today we're going to be talking about how to wire a solar panel array for an RV system. Uh, we're going to look at the differences between a parallel wiring configuration, a series wiring configuration, and a combination of both to keep our voltage and amperages within the accepted realm for our given pieces of equipment. So right here we have two examples of a charge controller that mediates the power made by your solar panels and takes that voltage and amperage and steps it up or steps it down for whatever needs you have in terms of your battery bank. So um, these ones uh, are made by Victron. Victron is what we use exclusively. We've gone through Renogy, we've gone through Go Power and a few other brands and found that the quality and uh, the size for the same size amperage controller in the Victron is a lot more manageable for compact RV installations. So that's what we're using exclusively now is Victron products. They also have the, uh, the largest warranty at five years is the best warranty on the market. So that's what we use. So we're gonna dive in with what we have here. You'll see a couple numbers on these products. You're gonna see a 100 slash 30 or an example for a larger controller is a 150 slash 85. What these numbers are, are the maximum allowable voltage and amperage ratings of that product. Um, so the 100, the 100 on this controller is for a 100 volt max. The 100 volt max is in terms of your solar panel voltage coming into the input of the controller. That can never exceed 100 volts or you risk damaging your controller. Uh, when you get into the larger amperage controllers, the larger ones here, you'll see 150 in that voltage column. So it's allowing you to have a higher voltage, but still you cannot exceed that 150 volts without damaging the product. The second number, the 30 on this smaller 30 amp controller is just that. This is good for an output of 30 amps to your batteries. So at 12 volts, it's good for 30 amps. At 24, it's good for 30 amps, whatever it is, regardless. You have a maximum output on this controller of 30 amps and a maximum output on this one, similarly, is 85 amps. So uh, you need to size your controller correctly. Victron publishes the information for how much wattage can be handled by each controller. And uh, you can get on their website and figure out for what size array that you're gonna have in total wattage, which one is correct for you. So make sure you're looking at that before anything else so you can properly size your controller for the total amount of solar wattage that you're gonna end up having for your system. Here we're looking at the back of a solar panel module. Every solar panel on the market, when you unwrap it, it should have a sticker on the back of it that lists all of the specifications for that panel. And what we're looking for is the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. So at open, circuit voltage that's the maximum voltage this panel should put out so if you measured at these two points with a multimeter you should read 27.3 is what this panel has that's what you should be getting there in a short circuit configuration the maximum amount of output should never exceed 9.5 amps these are numbers that we need to keep in mind when we're uh, configuring our solar array in a configuration to make sure that when we're doing series or parallel connections that our voltage does not exceed the rated voltage of the charge controller we're using and the amperage does not exceed the amperage allowable by the wire size that you chose to run from the roof down to where your charge controller is located. In the simplest of terms, the parallel wiring configuration essentially just means that you're putting all of the positive connections together and all of the negative connections together and running those down with your wiring. Conversely, a series configuration is when you would hook one panel's positive to another panel's negative, making it essentially one large panel together, and you'll use the positive of one panel and the negative of the other to connect to your wiring to run down. The differences in these configurations, when you wire in parallel, all the positives together, all the negatives together, your voltage of your panels stays exactly the same as what's noted on the sticker on the back. So your voltage stays the same, but your amperage now doubles because you have two panels in parallel. Put three panels in parallel, now you have triple the amount 
of amperage that's listed on the sticker, but the voltage remains the same. On a series connection where you're going positive of one panel to negative of the other, your voltage doubles and your amperage stays the same. So the same would go for three panels, right? Three panels connected in series, you're gonna have triple the voltage listed on the sticker, but the amperage is gonna be the same as one panel. So you're essentially making one very large panel with a way higher voltage. Um, a, a series parallel configuration is when you do a little bit of each. Let's say you have six total panels. You put three panels in series to triple your voltage but keep the amperage low. And then you have two banks of those. So you have the three in series, three in series. And then the outputs of each array come in to be paralleled together to send that down. There are some very simple products on the market to help you accomplish these tasks. Um, parallel configurations are very easy. You have uh, pieces like this that you can take and it accepts two female connections from two different panels and gives you one female out connection. So you can put two panels in parallel with one piece of equipment. You have the double male with a single female output and you have a double female with a single male output. And then your output wires down to your controller would connect to the single port on each one of those. If you have more panels that you wanna put all in parallel, you have uh, triple connectors, they have four-way, five-way connectors. It really depends on how many panels and what your configuration is gonna be at the end. Uh, we call these trident connectors. They're a little nicer to work with. They have a, a long, connection point so you have more room and more flexibility for maneuvering your wiring once your panels are in place. So here we have two identical 200 watt panels. Um, we're gonna be looking at these connections on the back. These connections are called MC4 connections. All standard panels come with MC4 connections. Uh, the only panels we've run into that don't have MC4 connections are either made by a brand called Furion or a brand called Zamp, Z-A-M-P, Zamp. Um, very difficult to work with. They do not have a standard MC4 like these. They have uh, what's called SAE connections, which is their own prior, uh, proprietary piece, which requires you to buy all proprietary components that they sell only for their panels. So if you're gonna purchase one of those products from them, uh, just be aware of that, that no standard MC4 connections will work with those panels. Um, so we're going to give a demonstration here. The male MC4 connection is the positive. So we put a lead in there and then we put our negative lead onto the negative MC4 connection and read our voltage here. We're showing about 25 volts on this panel. That panel should be identical. So to give an example of a series connection, we're going to take the positive of one panel and we're going to connect it to the negative of the other panel. Once that connection is set, now we measure from the positive of one panel and the only one left on this panel side is a negative. So you're essentially combining the two to make one large 400 watt solar panel at a higher voltage. So we'll measure the voltage now that we've combined these two in series and we should have about double. So right now we're reading 50.5 volts. So essentially double of what we had with just a single panel. Now let's look at a parallel configuration where the positives all stay together and the negatives all stay together. We'll use our combiners, our MC4 parallel combiners here. We will take the positive from each panel and plug them into the connector so that we take two connectors down to a single output. And then we take both of our negative connectors into this one to give one negative connection. And the output of that connection is what you would connect your wires going down to your input of your charge controller. So that's how you'd run that out. So with these in parallel, we should have a voltage that stays the same as a single panel and our amperage should then double because we have two panels in parallel. So let's measure this guy here. And we're sitting 25.2 volts. So 25.2 volts is about the same as we were reading for a single panel. 
However, we have now doubled the maximum amperage that these two are putting out. So instead of 9.5, we're now at about 19 amps total coming down. So you need to consider that when picking a conductor size, your wiring going from your roof at your solar panel array down to the input of your charge controller it needs to be able to handle that, that amperage. So at least 19, you always wanna give some leeway, never really exceed 80% or you start getting some losses as you build up resistance in that line. So now that we've gone over both configurations that you can use to wire your solar panels, series and parallel connections, and what they do in terms of voltage and amperage, now we can talk about putting that all together and making sure that we don't exceed the limitations of the charge controller. So on our smaller example that we showed earlier, we had a 100 volt, 30 amp controller. So maximum voltage that thing can receive without causing damage is 100. We personally never like to go over 80% of that. So if you cut it really close, if you have a 100 volt controller at the maximum input to it, and you're running 90 volts into that controller, there is a chance that you will overvolt that controller in those winter months. So keep that in mind. We've seen it only a, only a couple times, I think two times in the last four or five years that we've had that happen. Um, so we made a new rule of thumb of just not, not just staying underneath that voltage limit, but never exceeding 80% of it has been uh, a good balance point for us to never have those alarms coming up on the charge controllers or causing damage. So keep that in mind. Um, so we got a 27 volt maximum output panel. I like to round up, so we round that up to 30. So if we have 30, the maximum amount you'd want to put in series to stay under that 100 volts would be three. So if you had three panels in series, you'd be at, a, at just under 90 volts and you'd be pushing over that 80% limit already. That's up to you. They claim 100. We've seen things happen that are not quite what they're rated for. And in those winter months, we've had issues. So we stay at 80%. So the maximum we do of these two panels, we never go more than 80%. So we would do two in series max. If you have four panels, you do two in series, two in series, and then you can parallel those together so that the voltage is still in a reasonable manageable range for your controller, and then you just have double the amperage. So instead of nine amps coming down, you'd have 18 amps, which is still very manageable, very small size wire, 12, 10 gauge solar wire can handle that easily. You can run that down and also have a higher voltage that's still within the realm of your charge controller. A couple things to note about these configurations, the pros and cons, there are a few to each type of setup, whether you go parallel, series, or a combination of both, there's some things you need to know. When you have two panels in series, the positive of one is connected to the negative of the other, you are now subject to shading if you park underneath a tree branch or the clouds come in for a little bit and shade only one panel. So let's say that only this panel was shaded, but this one was still in a place on your roof of your RV that was completely unshaded. It would affect the output of both panels equally. So even if only one is shaded in a series configuration, you will receive the same degradation of output from your panels for the entire array instead of just one panel. Conversely, if you have them wired in parallel, when one panel is shaded and the other one's not shaded, the performance of one does not affect the performance of the other. Um, so if you have a big system, it's, it's very, very important that you kind of map that out in your brain, where if you have items like your air conditioner on your roof, that at certain points where the sun is in the sky, it shades a panel, you need to make sure to try to configure that so your panel that's going to be shaded is not in series with any other panels. Otherwise, that loss, that degradation of output is going to affect the entire array. Every panel that's in series with it will drop the same amount, as opposed to a parallel configuration where if one panel is shaded, the rest still perform at their maximum level of output for your given conditions. Series and parallel configurations can get a little more complicated inside your head trying to map out the wires. Um, the easiest way I found to do it is to essentially just think of every one of your panels in series. Once they're connected in series, they are now one panel. When you have two panels in series, 
you've given one connection to the other panel and it's given up its other connection. So really at the end of the day, all you have is one connection from one panel and one connection from the other panel and they're always going to be opposite. So you're always going to have a positive from one and a negative of the other, no matter how many you string together. So if you had six panels all daisy chained together, positive to negative, positive to negative, it's not going to make a difference. At the end of it, that is essentially one very large panel. And on the end of the string, you'll have either a positive or negative. And on the other end of the string of panels, you'll have the opposite connection, a positive or a negative, depending on which one you started with in the daisy chain process. So don't get that confused. You still essentially only have a positive and negative output, even with a string of panels. So if you do multiple strings, if you like the current example we were talking about, you have three panels in series and another three panels in series, you're still only going to have two connections for each array. So you've essentially made your six panels into two large panels. And now you just need to parallel those two sets together and run that down with your output into your charge controller. And that would give you a perfect series parallel connection to be able to manage those voltages and amperages in accordance with the piece of equipment you're working with in terms of your charge controller and also the maximum amperage for the conductor taking the power from the roof and your array down to that charge controller and make sure you're within your amperage limits on the conductor. That just about concludes the amount of information that you'll need to successfully wire up a single, double, triple panel, six panel system, whatever you're gonna end up doing, you now have the tools and the know-how to be able to balance those numbers on the back of the sticker in accordance with the specifications for your charge controller and make sure that your conductor's rated for that same power.